Hello. I have made a little patch for uh, FL Studio 12.1, so I'm going to give you a demonstration and then go through how I came up with the sound. Check this out. Okay, so let's go through the patch and see how it's done. Uh, over here I actually have a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 formula controllers and 3 key splitters, which I'm using to control my VSTs. I'm actually using 2 VSTs only, Addictive Keys and uh, String Essentials by Peter Sidelack. Sidelack check. <laughs> Sorry. And these are um, uh, legacy uh, legacy libraries, so the uh, samples aren't actually that well made compared to uh, current state libraries, such as uh, cinematic uh, uh, cinematic strings two, or uh, Vienna, or any other uh, library that is used by the people today, but. Even, uh, even though this is legacy, I, I think it's more about how you are using the samples to come up with your own sound. And let's see how it sounds dry. So I'm going to just turn off the effects just for a while, and uh, I'm taking off the piano over here. So now I should have just um, uh, strings playing. Just a second over here. So let's take out some of the effects over here. This is what it sounds like dry. Now I'm going to put uh, effects over here, back up, and let's try the sound without piano. And 
And as you can see, I have split uh, different uh, different uh, VSTs, different rotors over here. I have the high strings, which is playing this two, uh, low strings, which is playing, playing the legato two, which is actually uh, split low, uh, split low end of my keyboard, and bass and cello, which are over here, and. Uh, Piano is layered out of uh, two similar addictive keys with uh, the difference that another one is playing an octave, octave uh, lower than other one. And for the piano I actually put some extra reverb. As you can see it's really wet in addition to using a convalescent reverb over here. So this reverb takes uh, or punches into a, a long reverbing. As for this one, is just giving an extra timber for for um, for the sample. Uh, as for other equalizations. High strings, uh, I'm giving a little boost or here at the mid range, but I'm cutting off everything at at uh, plus 2.5, I believe. And low strings doesn't have anything special, as well as cello and bass, nothing over here. Higher strings, uh, I could add a little boost of a reverb if I want to get a little smoother, smoother uh, result. But I'm fine with without it currently, and I'm cutting off the mid range just to get smoother experience. Uh, low strings uh, has this curve over here, so basically this is just uh, the same curve I'm using for the high strings. Finally, all these strings are mixed together over here at strings mix. As you can see, I'm not putting any output directly to the master channel because I want to uh, have control, uh, unified control over here, just to put the same effects for each string. So, from here to here, and high strings has that extra. Uh, reverb over here at the effects bus. As for the others, not so much. And over here, let's take a look at this patch because it looks a little complex. But I'm using the new key splitter VST, uh, which gives you uh, a possibility to create uh, different sounds for um, playing around. As you can see, I'm playing my keyboard. And this curve over here uh, is displaying whether to play the notes from uh, zone one or zone two. So as you can see, I'm going to play over here. And this note is not going to play on zone two because it's out of range of this curve. As for the red curve, zone one, it's it's going to play at an octave higher than usually. Uh, I think this was yeah, it was the this one, and this basically means that when I'm playing from keys, it's going to do some filtering whether to send the notes to certain uh, instruments. Or not. The same goes for everything over here. Here I have four different zones just to get uh, different layers for... Uh, okay, I'm not using the woodwinds currently, but I'm using Legato 2 and Legato 1. So this is the high end and low end of my keyboard. And this is just an octave higher high end. 
and these formula controllers have different uh, formulas which are controlled by sending the smart wheel to controllers and controlling his uh, knob A, the parameter A. I'm using uh, uh, some area of uh, of this key over here uh, or uh, wheel. I'm not using it to uh, uh, zero and hundred because it's just a bit too much to my my taste. I want to just leave it the tiny bit out of uh, the max range. And this tension is uh, doing that as I'm using the vel same velocity all the time, it's going to make a little bit faster curve at the end of uh, my mod wheel. As you can see, I have um, just a bit different formula over here for the legato one high, because I'm controlling this knob over here with a key I'm pressing at my keyboard. So this B equals zero or one, which means that uh, it's not just about uh, moving the mod wheel to get some uh, curve over here, but I have to have this triggered on in order to get anything calculated from here. So this is kind of an on-off control for uh, Legato one high. And over here, I have output to Legato 1 main volume. So currently I haven't pressed the button and it's controlling just the dynamic range through another formula controller over here. And now I'm going to put this on and you can see the main volume is starting to move. So this is what uh, brings my high strings uh, doubling when I'm turning the mod wheel over 100, 100 uh, parameters, so. And let's turn it off. And on. I wanted to make the legato to uh, kind of a filler for the mid-range of my keyboard. So let's see how it's routed. It's the zone 2 and zone 2 over here. Okay, uh, it reaches to the uh, lowest end. This curve actually should be controlling the velocity of uh, instrument plate. So if I'm going to press something over here, it should actually play a little bit lower, at lower velocity, but currently on this version of FL Studio it's not working. It's on or off, and in this case it's on. And it's always off if there is no curve at all. The bass and cello are playing in a unified, uh, sorry, uh, polyphonic, but his legato 2 is uh, giving just the uh, melody, melody for, for the song I'm playing. So I, I actually have two separate legatos playing around at the same time. If I would use legato, uh, this legato 2 as an ensemble with uh, with uh, a polyphonic response, it would actually just make a mess to a track because it's playing too many notes at the same time. It's most important to get one clear sound uh, per octave or per two octaves and the additional uh, little bit uh, smaller sounds, in this case cello and bass. And as you can hear, everything is equalized 
a tiny bit um, smoother from the high end and I wanted to make it like that because I'm using the addictive keys to give the timber that is missing. This one mod wheel link over here is controlling cut off for this uh, piano. So if I'm going to play uh, something with a uh, mod wheel down. So that's pretty smooth. And I'm going to open it a little bit. Just like that. So, here we have it. Have it. So, hopefully you have learned something from this and uh, you're able to Use this knowledge to come up with your own sounds and own setups. Uh, it's great to play everything at once because it gives you an uh, expression to try something out, which will be quite cumbersome to uh, achieve by playing one track at a time. I'm unable to write anything just by playing like cello first and violins after that and maybe uh, ensemble at the time and finally piano or other way around. It's just too much uh, work. And this way I'm able to just try something out quite fast enough and well, I think it sounds great. So, thanks for watching and uh, until next time, keep on playing and if you have any questions, just uh, drop me a comment or a message and uh, I'll try to answer them up as soon as possible. So, until next time, see ya.